because all of you know that Foucault has a no son of power which is decentered, uh, uh, horizontal. So, what is this decentered notion? Right? What do we mean when we say that Foucault? Does it mean that there are so many centers, not just one center? Does that is that the meaning of decentered? Does decentered uh, mean that uh, you know there are there are multiple just multiple locations? So instead of just one center, there's multiple look. Or does it mean that the center was earlier here? Usko? We moved it here. Does it mean that? Is it that uh, the conception of power remains the same and we only decenter it? Is it that? So, what exactly do we mean when we say uh, Foucault uh, has this uh, notion that power is decentered or dispersed? So, is it that we take the same kind of power which we have in the traditional conception, which is the Junjunu conception, which is the juridical political conception, and we just then scatter it? You know, that uh, we beat a rock and make it into sand and then we just scatter it? Or is it that there is no rock at all? There is always sand and the rock was in fact only created in the minds of certain stupid political theorists. Right? Um, uh, because with Foucault that's the kind of sense we get. Um, so I think one way to enter uh, Foucault's own conception given the fact that we have touched upon the methodological points here that Foucault has a different methodology. Right? So, one way to uh, start is to look at some lines from Foucault. Uh, Foucault says that the soul is the prison of the body. The body is trapped in the soul. Usually we think of the, the, the body as imprisoning the soul. Right? So, uh, so great spiritual gurus and big mahatmas and sant, the saints, they are supposed to give up this earthly abode which is the body and their soul flies away. So they have not died. They have only done, what is it called? Um, deha Dayak. Right? They have only given up this, this thing. So the idea is that the soul was trapped in this body and we should go. Now Foucault turns that around and he says, no, it's not the soul which is trapped in the body, but the body which is trapped in the soul. What does he mean by that? Secondly, he says that those who are facing power are themselves its bearers. So it's, you don't have to write it, it's, you will get this text. Anyways, uh, so what does it mean to say those who are facing power are themselves its bearers? So, it's not like you are facing power which exists elsewhere and then it comes upon you, right? You are yourself the bearer of that which you are getting. It's like you are not stuck in the traffic but you are the... You are the traffic. <laughs> Banal example but... Something like that, right? So, you're not... When people say that, like if I'm stuck in a tra traffic, I call a friend and say, I'm stuck in traffic. Then my friend who he always wants to joke will say, oh, you are not stuck in traffic, you are the traffic. I say, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, so, so what do you see? There is this convergence. There is, a, there, is a, there is a convergence that don't try to say that the uh, traffic is out, existing outside of you and then you happen to be subjected to it as though it is something external. You are the traffic. <clears throat> then Foucault says its strength, as in this new kind of power, this decentered notion of power, is that it never intervenes. The traffic never intervenes in you because you are the traffic. So of course, how can it intervene? It is exercised spontaneously. You just naturally you're part of the flow, and without noise, no friction, it constitutes a mechanism whose effects follow one another. It con constitutes a mechanism whose effects follow one another. Whose effects follow one another. Think of this. Usually it's the, it's the cause 
is the yeah the cause is followed by the effect this cause and then effect wohi hota hai na kya hota hai this cause and then effect but no now there is no cause effect to effect to effect what kind of a notion is that there is only effect there is no cause there is no origin there is no point of origin that is started from here who is spread the fake news okay let's do this so whatsapp said let's do this thing we can so that we can trace who first uh, you know let this uh, fake news meme uh, circulated it so now they write for forwarded in the whatsapp forwards right so you can trace back but there is no point where you can go back to and say that is the origin that is the cause effective or another thing you can think of is when you throw a stone in water in a pond and then there are ripples right so in that you can say the ripples are caused by that stone which is thrown but imagine ripple to ripple no stone thrown or even if it was thrown maybe at some point in history we don't know that what we know is that ripple to ripple to ripple to ripple to ripple what do we say called ripple in hindi we don't know right um so whose effects follow one another right now this is a different conception here you would need a different methodology to understand it and then blah 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 it gives power of mind over mind power of mind over mind you can say this about a very mean person you know who is so chalak and just as this just gets you into his scheme you know it's like power of mind over mind he really like really like you know brings you along and uh you don't really realize that you are getting into his trap power of mind over mind so with these notions um we have to ask then uh, if he, if this is what he's saying about power that this is how it works then um what exactly is the mechanism through which power in this sense works what is its internal mechanism how does it um how does it not really move but how does it spread if by move we mean moving from point a to point b that doesn't really apply for fuko right point a to point b that's not working with fuko the the metaphor is more like spread it's more like you know when there is smoke coming out the smoke does not go like a water cannon straight like this how does the smoke go in the air it spreads i think in english we say it's blowing right it just goes like this like this is the thing like a tree you know once it goes up it just spreads like this it forms a network now uh one way to think of it is uh fuko's use of the term capillary power capillary what is the meaning of capillary anyone knows capillary yeah down to above now usually water moves like everything else according to gravity if i throw water it falls but take a plant in a plant what happens water goes from the roots of the plant and it goes up into the branches and the leaves and the stems <clears throat> how does it happen it's a capillary power if you do a little experiment take a little bowl of water and then bring a paper a blotting paper does everyone know what a blotting paper is blotting paper and then you keep it here or that tissue paper khate waqt dete hai na aisa tissue paper you know um i hope i don't have to actually say this is a tissue paper this is a bowl of water now see what happens so if you if you bring the tissue paper here upside like this vertically then you will see the water just goes up like this right that's a uh, capillary action as against say in all these buildings in delhi you know you have water which goes up how does that water go up in these buildings that you live in motor motor chalata hai na you put on a motor and then the water goes up 
the, the, the motor driven one is there is an actual push pressure and it goes up. We are not interested in that. That's not how power works. That there is a cause, there is a point of origin and then and then oh my god in Delhi they disturb you in the morning. You know you can't sleep properly because of this. Every household is. This is what Modiji should solve I think you know. Make India motor free. I would vote for anyone who does that. <clears throat> so, uh, but here in capillary, uh, the capillary movement is a different kind of a movement. It is spreading. It goes uniformly. And because there is no point from which it is pushed, and there is no point which kind of pulls it in a unilinear fashion, it is a very uh, frictionless, continuous spread, <clears throat> right? Um, so, uh, so that is one uh, way you can look at the way then uh, this kind of a thing that a ripple leading to ripple, effect leading to effect can happen because there is no one point uh, from which the the the, the push happens, right? Um, and there's also you can see that the that the that the um, now uh, that's how also the it's also how the mind working over mind would be like that. You know, it's not like just um, some interest based thing, which is a one off thing. You are doing something just to get some money. That's like a one off thing. But that's also why. The second example I think I already gave you in this class earlier, it's about the human mic. I talked to you, told you about the human mic. Do you remember the human mic? <coughs> the human mic where we do not want to, there is a huge crowd which you want to publicly address, but you do not want to use a mic. Uh, like, a, like a technical, like the, the machine, the mic. But you want to use a human mic, so if there are people seated at the back, they can't hear me, I will speak as loud as I can, so the, uh, the, the, the person at the end who can hear me, beyond which nobody, the other people cannot hear, he will then transfer what I said onto the rest of the people. Like that, it, 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 it's like the ripple thing, right? It's like the ripple. So the human mic was used in the Occupy Wall Street movement. And uh, they used to call uh, very famous speakers, but there's no mic. And of course, it's time consuming, um, but uh, it was again this horizontalist thing because they wanted to do away with any kind of hierarchical uh, top down things, so either a stays or a, or, a, or a formal mind. Um, I think I also uh, mentioned to you something else. Um, 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 <clears throat> Um, anything else do you remember that we have done earlier? Um, so in any case, so with the, the, the capillary movement in the plant, there is also this other thing that it moves through cohesion and adhesion. Right? That's how I think even the way, yeah, you know, this is like something standard if you see any, I don't know, chemistry, biology books. You have all done it in school, by the way. We have all done this <laughs> as a capillary movement that, uh, that takes place. Um, <clears throat> now that's... Uh, the way then in which power would then uh, not really be wielded, not really move, but that's how it spreads or that's how uh, it inhabits us, bodies. Because it's not like that power will just come suddenly from somewhere like a flood of water in a normal happy village suddenly flood over. No, it's like we are born into it, right? We are born into it. And I think I was mentioning this in, 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 in class, yeah? That's right, it would be mostly uniform. It would be mostly uniform. Even though even though even though even though it is it will be by the logic of its own its own logic is one of uniformity. But there are other logics that might be working because there is a state power, the juridical, juridical political 
uh, state power exists. So that sometimes cuts through this, right? Yeah, you know, there will be Mawalis are there, Gundas are there, <laughs> all kinds of people are there in society. So in that sense, of course, it will be uneven because there are other logics that are still at work. Here we are talking about one particular logic of power, you know, because state is there, you know, um, uh, Gundas are there, uh, Dons are there, <laughs> um, uh, right? So, so thank you for asking this question. So there is... You, uh, so uniformity by its own logic, but there is unevenness because there are other logics still at work. There's a state, there is uh, elections, this juridical political system. What is called there are these other notions of sovereign power that exists, and the notion of the sovereign power, the juridical political notion, is what political theory is obsessed with, and it misses out these other uh, mechanisms of power which Foucault is trying to uh, open up. Um, now, the other thing I want you to uh, focus on uh, methodologically is, uh, is and then, okay, just before we move on to the next, and the, the, the bodies become very important here, right? So, it spreads in a capillary uh, way, power, but it spreads across bodies. What is there in this world apart from humans, right? Where does it spread? It's not spreading somewhere, somewhere else. We're talking. We are, we are in it, and it goes through our bodies, um, uh, right? And uh, that means when it goes through the bodies, we, our body, as it were, undergoes something like a full body scan. It's a scanning ray. You know, it's like you are X-rayed, you are scanned, so you become totally transparent. When you go for a medical checkup, when you go, doctor will say, I want you to be transparent. I want to see through your liver, I want to see your lungs, I want to see your kidney, I want to see your other organs, I want to see your heartbeat, I want to see your, uh, your what blood group you have, I want to see how much platelets you have, right? You have to be, you have to be decentered. You have to be decentered, right? You have to be brought apart and shown in all is this, then one can work because if you present yourself as one whole, as a rational whole, as a self, as a conscious rational self, as a I, you know, as a I, as this, that this is me, but this is you, okay, fine, but I want to see through you now. So uh, now how does that happen? One of the ways it happens is that first, for and at the level of the entire country or community, we count how many people are there, census. Then we do, uh, there's a health department, they, cons they, they want to find out what is the health of the people. They want to see whether people are having TB or dengue or polio, right? And they want to see how educated our people are. Why are we obsessed with this literary, literacy rates? You know, we are obsessed with that. Oh, we, people are like, okay, how much, what's going on with our country, how many people got jobs, this, that. Everything about the population, population. Is population different from the idea of electorate? Is population different from the idea of citizens? Population has that very direct bodily uh, sense. Right? Um, uh, so, uh, you are then not really that fully formed uh, rational self, but you are broken down into your different parts. And then we can have targeted policies. Oh, let's increase the health of the population. Okay, pass these laws, this, that. Let us give good housing conditions to the population. Right? So, uh, uh, you are being uh, targeted at the level of your own constituent parts. So power is operating in that kind of a way that there is no just the citizen as a legal category as the repository of rights who can go to a court of law to seek redressal for violation of rights that that legal notion 
of the citizen. That is broken down. And that's why he wants to use the word bodies. So this power is going to work on bodies. Uh, and not on just the legal subject, which is regarded as uh, as 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 fully formed as a rational uh, a pre-given self, right? Um, now, uh, so uh, so so what's going on then is that um, the, the 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 capillary action presupposes that, right? Um, if if you appear as a non-transparent self, then this is not going to work. So when in the earlier regimes, before democracy, before this regime of power comes under monarchy, for example, and Foucault will give you a lot of examples about how there are forms of punishment earlier that were using torture. So that was directly directed on your body. So it was the king's body versus someone else's body. That is evil. So you must kill. The power of the king was asserted by the power of the king to kill anyone, to take someone's life. But here, power operates not by taking someone's life, by, uh, by uh, imposing death on someone but by giving you life but by allowing you to flourish and but to allow you to flourish, flourish you know it's like the gardener you know who comes and who takes care of the plants who, who puts some water in the plants who will also loosen the soil a little bit and look at the turn the leaf around and to see whether it has been infected by some thing you know and you have to really take care and then it will try pruning this thing it is a caring. It is power which cares. It's a caring power. It is not only punitive. That's why you will see Foucault gives a lot of pages to talk about the earlier forms of power. So, you have this capillary action which then transforms you. You are not the same. I mean, you are the same, of course, bodily. I mean, bodily, you know, uh, you are the same as someone uh, 800 years ago. Maybe slight changes in evolution, as they say with the use of the mobile phone, maybe across five, six generations. I think our future generations will have a different kind of thumb. Because I think this generation is using the thumb like never before. Because the thumb. So maybe in like, uh, 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 I don't know, 2000, 3000, 5000, 10,000 years, those humans will have longer thumbs. We don't know that, you know. Or maybe these other fingers will be shorter and then there will be some parity. The thumb has become very important. Apart from that, we are bodily the same as in the time of the Buddha, as in the time of the Upanishads. Right? But with this new regime of power, you are now not the same. Uh, so it works like this and that's also the horizontalist uh, notion that you get. <coughs> but the other is that um, when it works like this, um, we are. There's also another sense in which the horizontal uh, thing works, and that is, um, and there I think we need to open another dimension of Foucault, which is when he says that when we have come from uh, forms of uh, power forms of punishment that were like torture, that was directly, you know, I think the older medieval period, they say that they used to take a hot rod, you know, and then put it inside your body. Right? <laughs> uh, and that would be done in front of the king. Today, you can say, the, today also torture happens, but it happens in a secret way. The state will not come and say, yes, we did this. State will not come and say, yes, we are doing some extra judicial killings. State will, you will never know. It hides anything that involves that kind of direct physical torture. Today's democracies will hide it. They do not want to accept that at all. But that was a time where they used to do it in a public forum, you know. Call everyone to Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium <coughs> and hang a few of these bastards. 
and with the, you get a crowd also they cheering yes yes you know tears they leg apart okay now pull his hand out now i want the, you want you, you know pull, pull his eyes out and throw it up and throw it in the crowd from that today when we see there is a different modality of power which now privileges preserving life over death now should we say that we have become more humane we are a better society now um things have improved we are much better here again in a different sense you know this thing that i was telling you about capillary power in a different sense now again now this will be about history when we were talking about capillary power or even the kind of examples i gave you with the human mic uh or uh with the okay the with the bad example of the tra traffic um um, uh, um 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 it was it was more about just the mechanism of thing but when we talk about this whether we have become more human we are now talking about history we're talking about what was there earlier what was there today so now that is a slightly different chapter that i'm opening up and i hope you will see the difference um uh you know also when you hear this again uh, this thing but before we move on to that on this earlier thing on the capillary thing on the mechanism i want to give you one more example which is an example often used in the kind of uh, uh methodological circle in which foucault is writing which goes back to the philosopher spinoza uh spinoza 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 suna s p i n o z a Spinoza is like really old I don't know 15th 16th century Europe Spinoza So Spinoza <coughs> Okay not really going with Spinoza but it goes back to that Foucault is in that tradition of Spinoza Nietzsche and all of that <coughs> So the example often used in these circles the Spinozoist circle you know uh is of you are in a neighborhood and you are living there since many years and every day you go to the market you go buy some vegetables you go to mother dairy you buy your milk and there is your neighbor whom you see almost every day you see almost every day he also sees you almost every day but you never talked you never talked and then somebody one day asks you hey do you know about this guy you know uh, he is in your neighborhood uh he looks like this and all then you say oh yeah 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 i know that guy that guy is i see him you know he comes to get milk i see him uh, he is going uh but you know i saw one sees a uh, bike had broken down and he was trying to fix it yeah yeah i know this guy but i don't know i never talked to him then uh, uh then uh, you know then but then you but then you you have some notion of that guy because you have seen him for so many years something this thing so and with me this happened once <clears throat> there was a neighbor like that and once i go to take a train at new delhi station suddenly i see him there and then are hello how are you yeah man so this is where are you going suddenly we had to talk there yeah every day we used to like kind of see but the boy but later when i talked i already realized that i had already formed some conception about him because you know what i had i had never talked to him he had never talked to me but i had what some vibes vibe or then a vibe got to get some vibe this kind of guy maybe is an arrogant guy because you have seen him quarreling with for for for, uh, for he was bargaining with the vegetable wala and every day you see him bargain right or he is very generous you buying the potato for 30 rupees kilo the fellow comes and he will he will spoil the rate for you he says okay 40 rupees i think what oh, is like nice guy or he is just showing off you don't know so you getting the vibe so this vibe is also that kind of a thing which there is no a to b kind of a thing it is just a vibe you've never really talked once you talk then again you uttered you expressed there is a movement but in the vibe there is no movement there is just this kind of a sense vague sense you get of each other so there is an interaction without any interaction right that's also like capillary power in fact i think for each of you you can make a vibe map like she talks to this 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 she knows the others also so she once met them there and she just kind of walk past them she didn't look at them 
they were looking at her. But she knows that they were looking at her. But then she will go and later tell her very close friend that, yeah, you know, I saw those guys, they were looking at me, but I ignored them. So, right, this is the vibe thing. So, this is another, um, uh, another, another, another way in which you can see this thing of uh, uh, the capillary, this thing. <clears throat> okay, so to come back to um, the other thing about where the notion of history enters. Now, what is going on there? You know, whether or not today we are living in a more humane society than the earlier forms of society. Now, we will all say, yes, we are living in a more humane society. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, we are living in a more humane society. Uh, because earlier it was like this, but today it is not like that. Now, this earlier it was like this, today it was not like that. There, Foucault will use the term or the notion, uh, which is basically two terms <coughs> that is used, which is the genealogy and history. Genealogy and history. Uh, now, what are these? Usually they are used as contrasting things. Then we will say, oh, Foucault does not subscribe to the notion of history, he subscribes to genealogy. Um, genealogy means you are tracing the history of a particular idea, particular tool, particular practice, particular artifact, uh, particular machine, particular anything over a period of, <coughs> period of time. But there is a difference, it is not history. I want to take, give you the example of Gandhi Charkha. Gandhi Charkha, so much debate about the Charkha, the spinning machine, the weaving machine. And now I think with this government they have put a huge Charkha in Kanat place and they are making a lot of Charkhas. Put Charkhas as like statues everywhere. And if you take a Charkha, you put it in the museum. Now as we also know the Gandhi Tagore debate where Tagore was attacking Gandhi saying that uh, you are making people more and more closed and narrow-minded by putting this charkha in the village, whereas we should be more cosmopolitan, open-minded and all of that. Now, if you take the charkha and put it in a museum, which is, I think, what is interestingly happening with this new wave of uh, followers that Gandhi is uh, apparently getting, <laughs> What is happening with the charkha? The charkha is now talked about. The charkha is very important. If you go and, uh, 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 you know, if somebody thinks that you are, you are, you are desecrating, disrespecting the charkha, then you might be killed or mob lynched or something like that, right? So the charkha is like very this thing. So you might be kept in a museum. But if you keep the charkha in a museum, then let me say we are doing history. We are doing history. But what Gandhiji did with the charkha was genealogy. You get the sense now? Because what did Gandhiji do with the charkha? The charkha was not just a traditional thing, not just an artifact from those days. And it was, that is, in a chronological notion of time, something which belonged to 500, 600 years ago. Nor was it something which is traditional in that traditional sense. Where you put it on a different register, called it, this one is traditional. I often do this thing in my mind, you know, where you put a, okay, if you think of the mobile phone as a modern thing, so take the mobile phone, and put the charkha next to it. Or even better, you know there is that oh, masala pisne wala, what is that? Patthar ka? Silvatta. Huh? Silvatta. Achcha, silvatta was this? So I often think of keeping this next to a silvatta. Or a robot next to a silvatta. Silvatta is very old. Really old. Not that one. This one is even older I think. <laughs> Right? And the achar test is very good with that, than the mixing. So if you put the two, then what are you doing? 
because today we are using the modern mixes and all but we also want that because that is so but that is tastier that's better right we are and today what is going on with all this patanjali swami ramdev and all more and more and you know, people are just drinking herbal tea in the morning people are having that plant that juice of some leaf and all that then i think it's as though we are living like 2000 years ago you wake up in the morning go to the forest and you just go and consume some plants and herbs some jadi butti that's what people have become today living in modern apartments they all have the jadi butti in these little this thing so they go to the forest this thing so what is going on here this is a collapse of what is tradition what is modernity this is a collapse of what is from 500 years ago 600 years ago 1000 years ago and today that's genealogy in history what is happening is that we often have a linear chronological thing this happened then but now we have moved on and now we are this that was tradition this is modern in genealogy you collapse it too and gandhi ji because that was the time of industrialization when gandhi is talking about the charkha and in 20s take the 1920s and in 30s industrialization railways people are thinking you know they are taking big strides in science and modern technology and all of that but gandhi says no the charkha is not to be treated as a traditional thing this is what we need today in today's world not as a going back to the old but as a as a as a still unfolding present or the past is still on the past is not over so this converses this thing the other side to it to the genealogy is again you come to the horizontal is notion but in a very different way and you know in what way it will come and this you have to go a bit into the uh, the different approaches that have come in what should i say in social theory in linguistics in anthropology and all of that and that is the i think i might have alluded to it in the earlier lectures again doing a an analysis not across time so you take anything today you often tend to think so if we're talking about sati today sati the practice of sati you know not jawar not the devika not devika what is the deepika padukone film padmavat right that is not sati that jawar no where you now you think of sati you think oh it's back there then you go and google you think that you realize that the sati happened like just maybe maybe it's still happening today i don't know <laughs> but we still think of sati as a primitive practice so you might say that well you know today women's rights and everything women are free today but earlier they had this but then today's women are facing patriarchy in today's form so you might say that no women are not facing sati today that's true but you cannot use the yardstick of that time and say oh women are free today across time not good across time analysis not good so what analysis in the present snapshot oh i used the term snapshot in the last class right i think it is there for some of this thing i said snapshot so we need to at one point in time what is the scene the scene what is the scene what is the scene the white scene the scene uh so we need to take things as it exists in the present and we look at the present as though it's a text it's a structure with its own constituent elements within it and we have to see how these different elements relate to each other so today women do not have to do sati they can go out to work they can wear nice jeans uh, trousers they can go to the mall whatever they study this 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 yeah but that you have to connect with other things 
in the present itself. And then you will see within that framework of the present, not across time, and there you will see how patriarchy works today. So you say, okay, we have the idea of the super mom. Super mom is a mom who works but also takes care of the house. Super mom. So it's true women can work outside but they, after coming back, they have to do the housework. So they are liberated from housework in some senses then because washing machine has come. Um, every time you don't have to take the kadai and garab karo the khana. You can put it in a micro, what is that? Not Microsoft, what is that? Oven, oven, micro oven. <laughs> Right? Uh, I really hate that micro oven thing. That's why the word also doesn't come to me. You know, I, I think it spoils the taste of the food, the micro. The, the oven is fine, but the microwave, microwave. That's what's called, not the micro oven, microwave. It's a kind of a wave that's also like some capillary heat, by the way. By the way, who's got to eat eh? I don't know you, maybe some of you know better. The way that heat moves apparently, uh, that's full capillary, I think. I might be wrong here, but please check. But now that we are at it, I think, so if you have a sandwich, one bun, then kuch kuch alu tikki inside, some cucumber inside and then another bun, right? So if you have it, if you put it in a tawa, then the heat goes up like this. Okay, you can say even that is our capillary, slowly the heat will go, blah, blah, blah. But I think what happens is that first, the lower portion will be heated and then slowly it moves. But from what I know about the microwave, it moves equally at all levels, all the layers are equally heated at the same time. I think that's like, Hypercapillary, but I don't like it. It's so I don't want to call it cap. I think it's some. There's some manipulation there. I think we are missing. There's some something which is uh, the the quality of that heat. Like what is that heat? I think I think there's some problem there. Um, so uh, let me go back now. I got distracted with the microwave. What were we saying? What are bitches out there? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, we have to, so the notion is called synchronic motion. When you look at society as a text, as a structure in the here and now and see how the different elements within it who relate with each other, they hang together and they are interrelated at this point. So the woman is working, but she's also doing housework. She's still having to marry within her caste and community, otherwise she's getting killed. So you have to connect all this in the present. Don't tell me, no, but earlier there was Sati, what are you talking about? Right? What is this? It's diachronic. Diachronic means across history, across time. But we want to do synchronic, where all the different elements are synchronizing or not. This comes out of linguistics. Structuralism, if you have, have heard the word structuralism. This is a structuralist approach, not just in political science. It came mainly from linguistics and anthropology where they were studying language. So in language, the good has a meaning vis-a-vis -vis the bad. The tall and the short, the negative and the positive. The meaning, meaning of anything within it is the meaning not of the thing itself or of the word itself or of the image itself but the meaning is derived in its interrelationship with another element, another word, another object. So it is through the difference 
that the meaning is this thing like with good and bad can you think of good as only good imagine there is no notion of the bad so it is in this interrelationship based on difference that meaning is constructed now this is what the linguists were saying this is their linguistics so for a language to happen there should be minimum at least two signs two words you cannot have a one word language of course you will say normally a language will have thousands of words how can there be a language with only two words but theoretically in principle the moment you have two words you can have language this is according to ferdinand de saussure you don't have to get into that but that's the name of the uh, linguistic theorist um so you want to do analysis at that level the other example i want to give you is by the way we have to get back to the genealogy history thing but these are all i'm throwing things at you um and you need to keep it in that drawer in that box of genealogy history the other example is about say if i tell you and a lot of people say this you know um that oh you know we have all these things now and everybody of course loves to uh hate on the mobile phone and all you know how this has spoiled us we are all watching this thing we are not talking to each other blah 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 which i don't buy into at all i think it's fine you know <laughs> looking at it um, <laughs> um it's so much fun you know <laughs> um uh, uh, so uh then uh, so all this technology all this development all this modernity all this growth uh bullet train 5 trillion uh, uh, dollar economy you know uh but are we actually happy with all this or maybe people living in the traditional uh, societies they were happier than us you know all day you do some work in this thing in the field and all you get very tired you lie down under the tree nice clean water is flowing in the river if you are thirsty go and just drink it from the river like this you know it's nice clean clean air scenic beauty you want to eat meat go grab one nice animal and roast it very fresh you don't have to keep it in the fridge you want to have some fruits go pluck it have it so some people say well maybe they were happier you know so when you do this kind of an analysis what are you doing you are saying that actually things have not become better maybe they were so with the concept of happiness you are cutting through the notion of a linear progress in history just as gandhi tried to do that with the charka he said what are you guys talking about industry modernity no this is the thing you need to do and it is good for your atma that's what gandhi said right atma shuddhi atma shuddhi it's like and everybody can do it's a easily available and it's part of our tradition that is the kind of arguments gandhi gave for the thing so when you are doing the charkha uh you are actually not just doing the charkha but you are playing enriching your soul it is god's hand in that charkha this is that kabir doha jini jini bini chadariya राइट जीनी जीनी बीनी चतरिया के राम रस भीनी राइट ये गाना पता है ना के राम रस भीनी चतरिया उसमें क्या है राम रस इज इन दैट वेन यू वीविंग वेन यू आर वीविंग दैट चतरिया द राम रस इज इज गेटिंग मिक्सड इन इट now you can say but when i am uh, doing the grinding uh, machine today when i switch it on then i think yes ram ras is bini jadariya inside you can say that i don't know you know i'm open to that i'm open to that then also you are doing genealogy then also you are doing genealogy or you are cycling very fast um so that's there 
that's also uh, so you see the difference so what is going on is that a critique of the idea of linear progress and history the discipline of history history that you have been taught in schools history that is still being taught in schools in the ncert books that history is presupposes a linear progress and Foucault is trying to break that now a lot of people call Gandhi a traditionalist he will take back society to you don't know where but there is no going back really for Gandhi you know he's saying are we really happy that's why he talked about the Soras the freedom movement in terms of the soul force what is going on here so when you learn a new thing, when you learn a new thing, you know, you're not just like learning the new thing and then you remain the same. Again, going back to the notion of the already fully formed individual. It's not like that. You undergo transformation. So it's not like you are like some computer or some like I just type this thing, I just put these inputs and then I shut it down. That's not how the human mind works. When I learn something, it is not just that I have, okay, a lot of people do that in coaching centers and all. They just learn it purely at the level of techniques. It doesn't really affect their soul. And that's why Gandhi was scared that the freedom movement is become this external uh, fight with the British and we are not really transforming inside. That's why he said Atma Suti, right? So now there's a huge difference between Foucault and Gandhi. Gandhi will not think about the way power works through bodies and capillary action the way Foucault does. In that sense, Gandhi is far more conservative. Gandhi is not that radical in that sense, um, uh, right? And also the notion of the Atma. When you see Foucault is saying that the soul is the prison of the body because Gandhi has that uh, quite a Hindu notion the body is like stool stool sarira bhutana stool means lowly flesh the flesh body desires regard lowly so Gandhi is too much into the atma and godliness I think he said cleanliness is next to godliness uh, right so um, uh, whereas with Foucault uh, the soul is not trapped in the body. The body is trapped in the soul. Body has immense possibilities. And the fact that the body has immense possibilities is known when once we render your body transparent and we can totally manipulate you internally, the internal uh, mechanisms, um, um, uh, <clears throat> um, and power does it better than anything else. Power has realized this. So this happens at the end of the 18th century as the older forms of direct torture and uh, pain and torture of the flesh ends and this so-called humane period quote unquote begins that's where this uh, new notion is coming. Right? Um, um, and but the thing it's a tension in Foucault, you know, on the one hand you will see he's talking about the body as really concrete material practices of power but on the other hand he's also talking about power as the power of mind over mind. So you feel like there is a disconnect there, right? It feels like at one level you say power of mind over mind feels like okay, just talking about maybe the psychological power through psychological thing, you know, manipulation or something like that. But on the other hand, as we know from the example of the definition of government that I gave you, that is really about how humans, human bodies and things are actually now uh, reconfigured in a new way. That's what, uh, according to this definition, government would be. So there you are talking about real material things and human bodies. Whereas when we hear this, power is the power of mind over mind, it feels like again we are going to a separate domain. 
So there is that uh, disconnect there that you need to uh, keep in mind or maybe there is no disconnect. Maybe we are not able to uh, approach him in the right way or maybe we can even think about how um, uh, how uh, the, the power of mind over mind uh, actually uh, so when you talk about the power of mind over mind and then you say soul is the prison of the body Akansa are you there? Uh, the body means that the body is full of possibilities right? it's only when like when you say somebody is in jail if that somebody is just a rock just a dead thing you will not say he is put in prison you know somebody is a human being is full of possibilities uska career khatam ho gaya he is being trapped there he was a great poet right uh, and in fact a lot of uh, people start writing poetry in jail they are full of possibilities but they have been trapped there so when you say that the body has been trapped that of course he means that body is full of possibilities body is like the soul right that's why he doesn't say that but that's what he's getting at so then maybe we can resolve this thing okay so many of you are sleepy hello so the body is full of possibilities only then you can say you know the body is trapped so in that sense we can say the body Foucault looks at the body as body but because body is full of possibilities, it is like the mind. As though it were mind. Body is not mind of course. Only a fool will say, Oh, you know what? Body is nothing but mind. My hand is a mind. Only a fool will say that, right? So he's not saying that. But, because, we can even put it this way, uh, because usually this kind of immense possibilities we think associate with the mind, the mind is its own place and it can make a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven. Some great man in history said this. So mind is very powerful, full of immense possible, infinite possibilities. Mind is God. What am I wrong man? Right? So in that sense, I think we can understand our mind over mind. Because we are in a modern, because the earlier, you know, when you look at this account, it feels like the earlier kings were like just dumb, stupid guys. You know, they didn't realize what they can do with the with human body. They just killed them. Oh, you did this? You challenged the might of the king? Kill him. And by killing that one person, a message is given to the entire people that the king is sovereign. That's how, that is the modality of rule under monarchy. Well, Foucault is saying that later we have this system particularly by the 19th century in Europe where it is fully realized that no that is not the way to do. Why kill? If I want to rule over you, I can rule over you by increasing the possibilities within you. That's why you will see constantly Foucault talks about in his work about about uh, regulation, modulation of the possibilities of the body, not killing the person, modulate, fine tune. TK, you know, in the last 10 years, 10 years ago, there were too many people were getting into MBA. Okay, let's fine tune the population a little bit. From MBA now, let's get into get them into the the data mining now. now. Most of jobs are in data mining, so let's get into data mining, right? Uh, data mining, both okay. Abhi, let's get people into this. There is this modulation of the population which goes on.
can modulate, no? Like you use the uh, fan ka regulator, no? Punch me, chal jada. But fan ka modulation is a tuck, 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 tuck. But there will be one which is more smooth. You can do very fine between 1 and 2 also you can do. 1.5 or the like, you know, very fine modulation. This modulation is getting finer and finer and finer. Earlier it was either on or off with the king. That's a chalra, that's a margya. Why modulation is not going to be able to modulate? Okay, it will be slow. It will be very slow. If it will be very slow, you will be able to say that it will be even better modulation. Why kill it? Right? So the analysis is the same. I think we are. Mixing things here. So the analysis is synchronic analysis. Uh, yeah, synchronic analysis, not a diachronic, and that is essential to the difference between genealogy and history. Okay? And uh, in the synchronic analysis, also, what I told you, the meaning of a thing is derived by the difference it has with the other thing. So basically here, uh, the methodology, not just in Foucault, but also in Deleuze, in most of postmodernism, uh, in uh, even Antonio Negri and a lot of theorists, um, is, uh, is, uh, um, is uh, yeah, is, uh, they, they share this uh, approach um, this uh, idea of uh, meaning through uh, difference um, that is there. So, um, um, so then we focused on the actual um, actual um, way in which power circulates, which is capillary action, right? We give the example of the vibe, we give the example of the human mind, we talked about how water, the mechanism through which water moves against gravity from the root of a plant up into the stems and the leaves um, um, and uh, my famous bad example about the traffic. And then we uh, braid these things. Well, yeah, I think we started by reading these lines from Foucault. And now I think we got some sense of, uh, of what then Foucault means when he says power of mind over mind, when he says that, the, that those who are facing power are themselves, it's bearers. Right? Do we now already find this quite obvious after this discussion? Not in my mind. Maybe some of you are able to connect it. Right? So the... So the... We will ask the bearers. Um, uh, right? Is this... Are we fine with this? Those who are facing power are themselves its bearers? Uh, can we see it now? Is it obvious? It's not obvious to me if, for some reason. My mind is not functioning so well today. Uh, or, is, or should we change it into those who are facing uh, power are external, um, 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 you know, are not themselves its bearers? Should we say those who are facing power are not themselves its parents. Kya par padta hai? Huh? Can we do this? Why can't we do this? Then we say those who are facing power are not themselves its bearers. Uh, 
power moves from A to B. We can do this. Then control Z. Control Z. Control Z कर रहा हूँ. Control Z is moving very slowly. Uh, because the yeah, I'm still not convinced. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is what it is. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's how the, how the uh, one who is facing power, uh, that's how he feels power as he chooses uh, to constitute power in some other uh, guiding force uh. or any other body. Uh. Bolo, bolo, or bolo. Say, thank you. Samjao, उसी चीज को बोल दो दोबारा बोल लेते हैं ठीक से सर थोड़ा और अच्छे वर्ड्स में सर जो पावर को बियर करता है जो पावर को फेस करता है वो बियर ऐसे हो सकता है कि वो चूज करता है कि पावर मेरे मेरे से मेरे थ्रू फ्लो करे किसी दूसरी बॉडी के थ्रू मेरे थ्रू वो चूज नहीं होता है चूज कैसे होता है चूज करने से तो देना अगेन यू आर अ रैशनल सेल्फ देन यू आर चूजिंग यू आर यू कैन डिसाइड द प्रिसाइज पॉइंट इज दैट यू आर नॉट डिसाइडिंग इट इज ऑलरेडी गोइंग थ्रू यू नो हां Yeah, this is happening spontaneously, and it's a continuous power. You will not realize you are in power because it's continuous. Because the modulation, if I change the fan from one to two, you will realize. Hey, fan, come cut it. Yeah, fast cut it. Turn lag right, come cut. Now, itna smooth modulation hai. Aapko pata nahi chalega. That's one. The other is wow, and no, and also because it's capillary. Not no. Capillary will not know, right? It's not coming like this. It's not coming like a ball is coming like this and hitting you. Then you will just decide, or you. The decision is not there. That's where the citizen is not there. The citizen decides whom I want to choose or not to or whatever, right? The citizen is a legal subject endowed with the right to choose, with rights, yeah. But that is not there. I think that is also there because there is the sovereign state, this, 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 right? And there are citizens. There is the constitution. But that cuts through. That's a different logic. That cuts through this other logic of power, which is existing. And most of political theory only emphasized on that. And there was very little conversation on this notion in which power operates. Um, now look at this other one. So that is more conceptual. The other section is uh, uh, more historical. Where Foucault talks about again, I think we have done the genealogy and history thing. But just to give you an example, you will be actually reading this in the reading I'll give you. That's why I am reading out the sentences. Uh, so it functions uh, outside this sudden. So you see, the earlier form of power was sudden, violent, discontinuous. The earlier character of sovereign power under the king was sudden, violent, discontinuous forms that are bound up with the exercise of sovereignty. The body of the king, with its strange material and physical presence, in a monarchy, the king's body was important. The presence of the body, the sovereignty is invested in the body of the king. If the king dies, this crisis. You must have another guy who will become the. king or the crown prince or something and we have so many uh, interesting stories in india with the moguls and other kingdoms where he didn't have a son and then somebody else became and this woman stepped in from the harem and she became very powerful right um, um, and all of that the body of the king with this strange material and physical presence with the force that he himself deploys 
or transmits to some few others with the force that he himself deploys in killing, in taking life or transmits to few, some few others is at the opposite extreme of this new physics of power. Look at the term Foucault uses, physics of power. Why physics? Because it breaks it down into those constituent parts, into this capillary movement, into how actually it functions. And there is a physics, why there is force, there is energy, there are bodies, there is a technology. Physics of power, not the politics of power, physics of power represented by panopticism. Here are, and there are two images then of discipline. At one extreme, the discipline blockade, which is functioning by blocking you. You can't do this, you can't do that. Right? The enclosed institution. Like you put in a prison, and the prison is somewhere, the hard jail, you don't know where it is. You, you dump someone there. Someone does a crime, you dump him somewhere. And then you just see his activities through a little hole in the jail. Right? It's enclosed, it's dark and dingy. Jail. That's the older notion. Discipline blockade. The enclosed institution established on the edges of society. Jails are not put like right there in Central Park in CP. Where is the jail? Jails are usually away. Outskirts, you will not know where it is. Right? And what is Foucault saying, you know, okay, you put the jail there, but actually the Central Park in CP is the new jail. That is the new jail. It's open, it's nice, it's full of flowers, it's lovely, it's beautiful, you want to dance there. That is the new jail. The jail has been generalized across the social body. And hence the jail does not remain the jail that it was. Now, the jail will change in its architecture, in its layout. The geometry will change, the physics will change. You know, when the Akshardham temple came up, I was like, oh, it doesn't look like a temple. You go there, they make you uh, take out your wallet and everything and take out your belt and you put through this scanner. I felt like I was going to board a plane. Have you been to Akshardham? How many of you have been to Akshardham? Please raise your hands. Wow, wow. Do they still do that? Because I went there like five, six years. Do they still do that? I felt like I was going to board a plane. What's going on here? It's a temple, again genealogy. It's a temple, what? Conversions, collapse of history, of different time frames. I don't want to go into a temple, you know, and like get frisked by this thing, you know, and yeah, yeah, catch all riser. Anyways, side thought. Oh, attacks are pehle bhi aise tha. Oh, it's a banana. It's about the architecture of it. And look at the parking. They have seen their parking lot. I'm in a temple. I like to go to a temple here, you know, in the line, this little corner, Pandiji sitting there, ding, 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 ding. There's like a parking lot, it's like a fancy five-star hotel. And I went there and it was like I went into the lobby of a five-star hotel. All these people say, excuse me, can I do something for you, sir? Sir, something? Home service? That's it. Now, okay, that's the way it is. <laughs> um, so, at, at one extreme, um, and you know what, terrorists, if you do this, then they will actually attack it. So that is not to defend people from terror, that is to invite terror. They are hand in gloves, they are in the middle of the world. If you have a temple, who is going to do it? They are going to open a lot of temples. In today's time, there are 99.99% temples are completely open. The moment you do those kind of things, then you are inviting some guests there, some unwanted guests. 
Okay, at one extreme, the discipline blockade the enclosed institution established on the edges of society turned inwards towards negative functions. Yeah, turned inwards. Those older prisons are turned inwards, as in even today they exist. That's the thing again, you know. So you have two different forms of modalities of power that are working at, at cross purposes today. You have the central park, but you have the jail. You have a enclosed institution on the edges of society, dark, dingy, um, under cell and all, you know, in which they keep and which is turned inwards. Arresting communication, suspending time. It's a kale kotri me dal kala pani me dal Suspending time, you don't know kya hai. From one day to the next, it looks the same. But when the breaking communication you read, no, you are reminded of a state up north, right? Breaking communications. At the other extreme, with panopticism, is the discipline mechanism or functional mechanism. Now listen to this: a functional mechanism that must improve the exercise of power by making it lighter. Not like walls, putting someone in this, you know, cut ghare mein dal do kisi ko andere mein. Right? You make it light, more rapid, more effective, a design of subtle force for a society to come. Now this transition from the discipline blockade to the discipline mechanism. Not by blocking the possibilities that are there in the body, but by letting it play out. Let it play out. Right? So, uh, so these are the changes. And so the other thing, quote that I have here, is that so the point of application of this power, point of application, is of course it's the body, not the body of the guilty man, set up against the body of the king. Not the juridical subject of the constitution, not the juridical subject which is the citizen, not the juridical subject of an ideal contract theory, but it will be the disciplinary individual. Um.